Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. Some of you had uh, expressed some interest about uh, Bluetooth and uh, a little bit more about learning about audio compression in lossy codecs. As it turns out, I uh, received a Bluetooth uh, receiver that's somewhat unusual. It's from Cali, the uh, speaker manufacturer. Uh, what's unusual about this Bluetooth receiver is that it actually has balanced XLR outputs. And uh, it also has a nice rotary uh, controller, so you can uh, adjust the volume and, you know, it sits nice. So, you know, if you have a live uh, uh, sound reproduction and, and uh, live setting and uh, somebody brings in some sound source that's only on Bluetooth or phone or what have you, you want to pipe it in, it's much nicer to use something like this than a uh, little, you know, consumer Bluetooth receiver with RCA jacks that could pull out. There were complaints about this on Amazon saying that it is noisy though. And uh, so they only wanted me to test it and uh, testing turned out to be uh, interesting. Uh, it uh, had some other bonuses, which I will go through. So let's jump into the review, which I just post on Audio Science Review website. If you're interested, you can go check it out. Um, this is a pretty low cost device, only cost uh, $99 on Amazon if you're in the US with uh, prime shipping, which is uh, quite nice. Um, I should say that I was most impressed with the feel of this uh, rotary control. It's really nicely weighted and uh, there's a light in here that, that's blue, that's their trademark color, and it gradually gets brighter. And so a lot of good uh, thought went into this uh, industrial design of this device that uh, I did not uh, expect to see in a $99 uh, 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 box. Uh, that said, it is plastic, so, you know, it uh, should have been metal for this application, but I suspect plastic is cheaper. Anyway, stays put, and uh, overall, I'm super positive about the uh, look and feel of the device. Now, uh, the... Uh, Communication over Bluetooth is with lossy codecs. Uh, peak uh, data rate is about one megabit per second, so it's less than a CD, and so you can't send it uncompressed data. Um, there are uh, different codecs that are supported, lossy codecs uh, that are supporting Bluetooth. Uh, the first one that was started the whole music streaming was the Philips uh, SBC, and I'll show you that. Uh, by default, at least on Android, uh, Aptex is the codec that's used. For source of these uh, tests, I use my Samsung S8 Plus, and if you turn on the uh, developer options, you can actually select the uh, audio codec for Bluetooth, which is quite nice. I uh, uh, use the Rune player to stream my content to it. The uh, Android audio pipeline is not a bit exact, so it probably screws around with stuff too, but I'm hoping that effect is secondary to what the lossy codec is doing. Um, I can immediately always tell when Aptex is being used because it has this funny noise floor. Uh, you can see the noise floor is not flat, but it's stepped down like this, and you always see this. Uh, I haven't looked at the algorithm to understand why it's doing this. It's strange that the noise floor is higher for low frequencies than it is for higher frequencies. Um, this could be because it's applying some kind of high frequency filtering, uh, to the highs. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. But whenever you see this, uh, uh, you know, step function, you know that that's aptex and certainly not a sign of high fidelity. Our source signal is just a simple sine wave, as you see on the left, and we get a nice clean spike in here, and not one killers, which is what we expect. Our sine add is quite poor, 65 dB, so you're 40 dB uh, uh, below CD 16-bit format. Uh, whether it's the codec that's doing this or whether Cal is doing it or a combination of both, we don't know, but we get in this and our distortion is only 0.05%. So uh, very, very low fidelity in our book. Output is only 1.5 volts, which is disappointing. On XLR output, I expect to see 4 volts output. Um, so, and you know, if you're going to use this in a live setting where you want to have, you know, 50, 100 foot uh, cable or even longer, yeah, you'd rather have higher voltages there, but you know, it's acceptable. Uh, it works. 
So I then switched the uh, codex to uh, AAC. Um, SP, uh, app, uh, well, I'll get to SPC in a second, but AAC is an advanced codec in that it has a psychoacoustics model. It tries to determine what is audible, what is not. But I mentioned to you in my last video on critical listening that the, uh, these lossy compression algorithms work on frame bases. They take a chunk of um, X number of audio samples, let's say 8K or 4K, 1K, samples and then apply compression in there and then convert that later on in the decoder back to time. The problem with the scheme is that anything you do to your signal generates noise that then broadband, uh, uh, it raises the noise or distortion level during that entire frame, not just the signal that you screw around with, but also the rest of that. And uh, when you have a transient, um, you actually can get what's called pre-echo in that the shadow of this actually occurs before the signal. So it's an echo that happens before the signal itself. So it's an inverted situation. When you have echo after something, it's not very audible, but if it's echo before, your ear hears that pre-echo first and then hears the signal. So it's quite sensitive to that. And we can see that clearly in here. Look at what happened to our one killer's tone. It actually has these shoulders in here now. It has a bunch of other random spikes too. Despite what I just explained, this should not happen. Why shouldn't it happen? It's because I only have a single tone at one kilohertz. The encoder should find that this is extremely easy to encode because it's just got one, uh, you know, when it converts this frequency domain, it only sees one tone in there. And representing this one tone in a compressed domain shouldn't take that many bits. So it would have had no reason to try to, uh, what we call quantize this, one killer's tone, and generate all this uh, pre-echo and post-echo. Yet that's what is done. Um, I don't think it's a fault of the receiver. I don't think it's a fault of the uh, Cali device at all. I will have to confirm that. I suspect is the crappy AAC encoder that's in here. So you have to basically real-time run AAC encoding. And this may be the low complexity profile, the LC version. Uh, it's not an area I've studied in the past. Uh, I need to do more uh, deeper dive, but I was quite disappointed to see this. I expected AAC performance to be better because it only compresses what it thinks is not audible. So it should be superior to dumber codecs that are used in all the other uh, Bluetooth codecs. Yet in here, we see clearly uh, distortion going over here. Now on the noise floor side, it does better. Uh, so it doesn't have this dumb noise floor increase that Aptex had. So that's good, but hey, uh, this, this distortion likely is problematic. The granddaddy of all these Bluetooth codecs is SPC. Um, when Bluetooth 6 special interest group started to look at music codecs, they asked for a royalty free uh, encoder with very low CPU usage. And Philips proposed this SBC codec. Um, when I was at Microsoft, we wanted to propose a counter to it, but they had such restriction on amount of CPU you could use that, you know, we didn't have anything ready to propose. So SBC basically won by default. Um, it uses a lot of bits, uh, so it's not going to be very resilient to long distances and lossy Bluetooth. When I said one megabit per second, Bluetooth, that's when you're very close to the receiver. As the distance increases, data loss increases, so it may not be good for that. Um, we can see that it has no pre-echo because it doesn't work the same as AAC does, so that's really good. Noise floor is nice and flat. But then there's all this garbage up here. I uh, am puzzled. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, I don't know if this is related to SPC, it's related to resampler that's used in, uh, in Android pipeline uh, or this Kali device. So I apologize for an in incomplete <laughs> conclusion. There are a lot of moving parts in here and I need to have a much deeper dive into, uh, uh, you know, each codec and, and testing it in, in actual implementation. So that'll come in the future uh, on this thing. But uh, our Synat suffers because of these tall spikes, but otherwise is actually pretty clean uh, on this thing. Um, I think I mentioned that the people were complaining that this has noise issues. So I ran a signal noise ratio uh, test and we can see that AAC with that lower noise floor was the best of the bunch, uh, but still only 12 bits of dynamic range. 
But as I was test, running this test, I noticed once in a while the, uh, the precision analyzer would come back and either say there's only 29 dB of signal noise ratio, and sometimes it would say 59, and then if I let it keep running, it would then jump up to these higher numbers. I thought it was because of the way I tested with Bluetooth is a pain in the neck to test uh, devices measure. I mean that I have to run, you know, run a test tone on my phone manually without my analyzer being able to generate it and then analyze the searches for that tone and measures it and it could miscue and not know where the start of the tone is. So I thought that was what was happening and I uh, didn't pay attention to that. So I let it run and took the best number thinking that was the most accurate. I'll circle back to this in my listening test. Um, knowing that single tone should be that easy to encode, I figured, well, one I use two tones, the intermodulation test, IMD, that I use in all my measurements. Uh, there are different IMD tests. Uh, the one I'm using has a, both a low frequency and a high frequency tone in it. So it has one at 60 hertz, one at seven kilohertz, and there's a four to one ratio in their levels. Uh, so these are the t two test tones that are in our source signal. Everything else is noise and distortion. And that was a fascinating thing when Aptex was running. I could see this uh, this little pulse in here. It would start at low frequencies and it would dance and it would go here and then it would start over again and it would dance. <laughs> Very interesting dynamic behavior. I don't know if it's a fault of uh, Aptex. I suspect it is because I didn't see it in the other ones. But bizarre stuff is happening. Uh, you know, it could be a bug, could be an implementation issue, or it could be just. It's a crappy codec app takes this. And then look at what it does to this uh, second higher frequency tone. It generates this large uh, uh, likely quantization noise. So it's chopping up the resolution of this tone and it's getting spread in frequency uh, in this range. So that's what I'm guessing is happening. Um, uh, again, I haven't done deeper dive, but certainly this is not what you want to happen to your uh, music because all detail now that's between this level and this level are going to be stepped on in this region. So your high frequency dynamic range is quite poor. So we get a Synad uh, equivalent in IMD uh, ratio is only 45 dB, so pretty pathetic. Uh, switching to AAC cleans that up nicely on a high frequency, but then we get this crud on a low frequency. Wow, uh, I'm speechless. I just, you know, two tones being encoded. I should they walk in the park for AAC encoder. Uh, why it isn't, I don't know. Uh, this is pathetic uh, IMD ratio. Um, SBC comes uh, way, way ahead. Uh, look at now, we see our two tones in here. This is our high frequency one. This is our low frequency one. Again, we get some random junk in here, but I'd rather have this random junk than to have, you know, all your low frequencies have this kind of shadow in them. Again, anything in, in this area is going to be hidden. So any detail you had in 100, 200, 300 hertz are getting stepped on by this AAC encoder. And this is a simple two-tone thing. If your music has a lot of these tones in it, which it would, then this entire thing becomes balloons and gets even worse. So, not good. I, I suspect I'm probably the first one to actually try to analyze these things and and people aren't paying attention. This It's just artifacts galore everywhere. So, having measured all this, I was like, well, you know, what's normal? I haven't done this kind of deep dive on another uh, Bluetooth receiver and, uh, you know, what's real, what's not real. So uh, I uh, hooked up the Cali to my um, balanced uh, topping A90 uh, headphone amplifier and um, started doing some listening tests. And boy, it was so abundant to clear how much nicer SBC codec was. Uh, both AAC and Aptex were just lacking detail. The uh, stereo separation was poor. Um, that tends to be because of either quantization noise or any kind of joint stereo coding. I don't know if AAC has joint stereo, MP3 has it, uh, in that in, we high frequencies are much harder to encode in lossy encoder. So one trick is to encode those as mono or something close to it, and hoping that the separation comes from lower frequencies. Uh, and uh, by going to mono, we basically save a lot of bandwidth in, in high frequencies. 
Uh, the penalty there is that channel, channel separation will, will uh, suffer. Um, these are guesses on my part, so don't run with them. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what I, what's in my mind at this point when I'm going through this test. But it, SBC was clearly better sounding. I mean, it wasn't even close. It just, it's like, whoa, you know, I did it two or three times on tracks with transients, female vocals with uh, guitar strings and stuff. Both ASC was just painful to my ears. It probably won't be to yours if you're not trained to hear it. But every one of those guitar strings got grungy, had pre-echo in them, and the highs were just dirty and not clean. So, you know, didn't appreciate that. So for me, if you're going to use this device, SBC was clearly the way to go. And then on a whim, I was like, well, let me pause the music and see if there's background noise. And the first time I paused it, everything was okay. But then when I repeated it, all of a sudden I heard this tick, and then all of a sudden loud, and then it would get less less noise, and then it would go up, and sometimes it would quiet down. I'm like, whoa, whoa, there is a noise problem in here. Can I hear it during music? Yeah, I can. And it would actually come and go. And so it was not always easy to hear it, but if the music was quiet and happened to want to produce that hissing sound, it would. So I thought, well, that's no good, but you know, where's the problem? Is it really in the Cali or somewhere else? So I happen to have a, my old trusty topping DX3 uh, Pro that used to be my main desktop um, DAC and headphone amp. Uh, it has a, a Bluetooth receiver in it. And so I fired this up. I uh, selected the same three codecs. When I paused, dead silence. 100% silence. I turn up this volume to hell, to max, and zero zero totally quiet and when i cycled through the th three uh codecs again spc was was superior to uh um bluetooth up uh, to uh, aac and, and aptex so to me we basically know this uh unfortunately the amazon reviewers were right it does generate noise i think it's due to the activities of the uh, Bluetooth decoder and what are, what all it's doing. Um, so, you know, these companies, they're not going to go build their own Bluetooth implementation from scratch. Probably use the existing module that's ready to go. And they, their value add was around this volume control and connectivity. So this is not some Kelly design, but obviously they're responsible for, for the bits in there. So different Bluetooth receivers have different qualities. Uh, it's also possible there's a power supply issue. This has its own power supply. Different than this, maybe there's not enough filtering there. I suspect this is licensed and contracted out to a company in Asia and China to build. So I don't know the details of it, but uh, unfortunately we have 100% proof that this is a bad implementation. It's not good for consumer use, not good for pro use, certainly. Uh, you got, you know, 5,000 watt speakers by the stage and, you know, you bring in a phone and try to, you know, use this as an input and immediately everybody hears, Shh, you know, that, how do you like my sound effect? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's not good. I'd love for them to go redesign this, just change the guts. I mean, they've spent biggest expense in here, by the way, is in the tooling and making this plastic molds and stuff. And I just hope they can just swap out that Bluetooth receiver and, and put a better one in there and, uh, you know, sell version two of this thing, the uh, Mountain V and VBT uh, on this thing. So hopefully this this was more than just a review of a product you're probably not going to buy, but I thought it was uh, interesting stuff that I discovered myself and reinforce some of the concepts we've been talking about around uh, lossy encoding and some insight into Bluetooth. Uh, I've gotten interested now to do a deeper dive in Bluetooth codecs. Um, and, uh, you know, when I get the time, which doesn't seem to ever happen, I will try to, uh, you know, produce a, you know, deeper set of measurements and listening tests on, on the different codecs. Uh, by the way, this one doesn't support LDAC, which a lot of people like the Sony LDAC. Uh, encoder. Uh, I'm uh, curious to test something that uh, has that as, as a receiver. Okay, hopefully you found this useful, and as usual, we'll see you in a future video. Bye-bye.